beam the captain and spark back up? We don't have the power. They'll come aboard a mass of dying flesh. Okay. But Scotty, what is power? And are you working right now? Are you sure? Energy is everywhere, and though it's hard to define, I think we all have a pretty good picture of what kind of thing it is. We can certainly think of examples. I have more energy if I eat more. I use energy when I run. But all that energy comes originally from the sun. The sun helps plants grow by giving them energy. Animals eat the plants, we eat both the animals and the plants, and we use that energy to move. Light energy comes from the sun, is stored as chemical energy in the plants, and we turn the energy into kinetic energy, into movement energy. Energy is measured in joules, and if you look on the back of a food packet in the UK where I come from, as well as the calories measure, they also show it in joules, or really kilojoules because there's so much of it. A kilojoule is a thousand joules. This packet of British candy, for example, contains 738,000 joules of energy. Right there. Energy is often defined as the ability to do work, but we'll talk about what work means later. There is an alternative energy definition that you can understand right now. You can think of energy as the ability to cause pain. If I throw a ball at you, it's gonna hurt. If I throw it harder, it's gonna hurt more. So you can say that when you throw a ball harder, it must have more energy than if you throw a ball softly. There are many types of energy. Light energy, chemical energy, kinetic energy, potential energy. So many that we don't have time to cover them all right now. Here are a few of them. Because there are so many, we're going to talk about two main ones in physics. Gravitational potential energy and kinetic energy. Ride a roller coaster and you can feel the strength of gravitational potential energy. What do I mean by that? Well, in physics we have a law called the law of conservation of energy. That means that energy can't be created or destroyed, it can only be moved from one type to another. So when a roller coaster car falls down a hill, and it does fall, roller coasters don't use any energy on the downhill part, that would just be a waste of electricity. When it goes down that hill, it gets faster. It gains kinetic, or movement, energy. But that energy has to come from somewhere. It can't just be created. It must have changed from a different type. It turns out that the higher up something is, the more gravitational potential energy it has. And that energy is released when it falls downhill, changing into kinetic energy. Think of it in terms of the ability to cause pain. If I drop a ball on my head, that did hurt. But if I drop it from higher up, if I was to drop it from higher up, it would hurt even more. That's because it has more gravitational potential energy. So when a roller coaster goes downhill, energy changes from gravitational potential energy at the top to kinetic energy at the bottom. The equation for gravitational potential energy is mgh, the mass of the roller coaster car multiplied by 9.8, the acceleration due to gravity on Earth, multiplied by the height you are above the ground. For simplicity, we're going to assume that the ground is zero potential energy. The equation for kinetic energy is a half mv squared. A half multiplied by the mass of the roller coaster car multiplied by the velocity of the car squared. So we can say that mgh at the top, the gravitational potential energy at the top of the hill, is equal to a half mv squared at the bottom, the kinetic energy at the bottom of the hill. And this is a common equation that we can use to solve some problems. So that's energy. But what about work? And what about power? Are you doing work right now? Those notes you're taking on this video, the questions you'll be doing in your next physics class, is that work? If I make you hold 30 books and stand there for 10 minutes while I talk about something, and I have you holding so many books that by the end your arms are aching, are you doing any work? Well, the answer to these questions is no. You're not working at all. In physics, work is done when you apply a force over a distance. And work is equal to force times distance. If you move the books up and down, then you're doing work because you're applying a force to move something over a distance. But if you're just standing still, like this, you're not doing any work at all. The distance is zero. So whatever your force is, if you multiply it by zero, you get zero. Zero joules of work. We have to be careful here though, because if I move a book sideways, you could argue that I'm not technically doing any work. This force I'm applying to the books is upwards, but it's moving to one side. The force of friction is doing work against the book if I move it sideways. Not me, not the force of my hand on the book, which is up. So the force has to be applied in the same direction that you're moving an object 
for it to be officially doing work on the object. The way you say it is pretty important though, because inside my body I'm still doing work, I'm just not doing work on the book. We'll come back to that distinction once more later. But another important thing to know about work is it always involved an energy transfer. When energy moves from one type into another type, some work must be being done somewhere. That's not to say that you're doing work on an object, but some work must be happening in some location. For that reason, just like energy, we measure work in joules because it's a transfer of energy from one place to another. When friction slows down a shopping cart, friction is doing work on the shopping cart to turn that kinetic energy into heat energy. And when you stand there holding a million books and your arms are getting tired, you're not doing work on the books, but there is work being done inside your body. The food you've eaten, the chemical energy inside your body, is being changed into heat energy in your muscles. So inside your arms, work is being done. It's subtle and potentially very confusing. You just have to be really careful. The key points about work are, one, that it involves a force F being applied over a distance D. Two, that work is an energy transfer that the number of joules transferred between one type of energy to another is the same as the amount of work that's done in that process. So if you have a thousand joules of gravitational potential energy at the top of a roller coaster hill, and that changes into a thousand joules of kinetic energy at the bottom of that hill, then you have done a thousand joules of energy transfer, so you've done a thousand joules of work. And work is equal to force times distance, where F is the force applied in newtons, and D is the distance that the object has moved. Last new term of the day. Power. Can't do it, Captain! We don't have the power! Power isn't too bad if you already understand work. Power is how quickly you're doing work. It's the number of joules of work you do per second. It's how quickly you're transferring energy. So the equation for it is work divided by time. The number of joules of work divided by the amount of time to get the number of joules per second. So, what is the unit of power? Yes, what is the unit of power? That's right, the what is the unit of power otherwise known as the joule per second. For example, if you get a 60 watt light bulb, that light bulb uses 60 joules of energy every second. So next time you're on a roller coaster, you'll be able to feel the power as gravitational potential energy changes into kinetic energy, doing joules and joules of work on you at a fantastic rate of power. And when Scotty doesn't have enough power, it's not that he doesn't have enough energy, it's that he just can't transfer that energy fast enough. Thanks for watching Flip Physics. You can like, subscribe, or go to the flipphysics.net website, but most of all, make sure you leave a comment below with your questions, thoughts, and suggestions. Until next time, keep questioning. See the turtle of enormous power on his shell. He holds the earth. All things serve the beam. Yup, Scotty.